So with that, a very warm welcome to our October 2024 session of the Spencer webinar series. If you're not familiar with Spencer, we are a nonprofit organization that supports future leaders of this industry. So that's everyone that's in the room with us here today. It is students that are pursuing careers within risk management, insurance, and actuarial science. And we support students and universities through various programs such as scholarships, grants, and our annual International Risk Management Challenge. So with that, we do have an awesome guest speaker who is here with us today. We have Patrick Fusak. He is the Vice President of Claims at Arch Insurance Group, and he is based in New Jersey. So thank you for being here today with us, Patrick. Thank you. And I will <clears throat> hand it over to you. Great. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon to, to everybody. Since I mean, I'm on the East Coast, so uh, it's afternoon here. You're looking at the registration list. Uh, you may have some people in some different time zones. So if it's for you, it's still good morning, then good morning. But for us, it was good afternoon. Um, you know, when I was approached about, you know, whether to speak on this topic, I was like, this works out fine for me because, as I was saying before, uh, it, this is like three different um, sessions that I'm doing kind of in interacting with this this topic. Um, so I recently did one at a local university uh, about interviewing some more specifically to those students. I have this one and then I'm doing another one with another organization where um, it's kind of a panel and I'm taking the role of an employer and the other person taking the role of the employee in the interview process. So um, kind of merged all these things together for this one today. So um, feel free to you know, make it interactive you have questions um you know it's a learning process so you know feel free to go at it you know however you want um as we go through um a little bit about myself but let me just share my screen that would help right um yeah and i just put in the chat okay. box um if you guys would like to tell us a little bit about yourself in the chat box um, that way we can connect with you there as well. Right. So you should see the slides mm -hmm. on the screen. Yeah. All right. So just a little bit about uh, myself. Um, reference before, my name is Pat Cusack. Um, I am currently the vice president of claims at Arch Insurance. I've been here about uh, eight years now. Uh, I've been in the industry, in the insurance industry uh, since 1991. Uh, that's when I graduated from Seton Hall University uh, with a degree in management and industrial relations. Um, so after that, I went to get my master's degree at the College of St. Elizabeth um, and then started my career uh, first working at Selective Insurance uh, here in New Jersey um, in one of their management training programs. Uh, from there, I spent some time at Zurich Insurance. Uh, then I became the head of claims at uh, ARI Insurance for about 12 years and like i said about eight years ago i came over here to join arch so been in the industry for a while if you kind of noticed this before everything has been in new jersey i'm a jersey guy um born raised schooling work all here um so um you know that's a little bit about me that my contact information is there um you can reach me through my email at arch if you have any questions or you know feel free and i recommend for people to to connect with me on LinkedIn and others as, as we kind of go through that. So one of the things I, I always tell the people is to, you know, recognize what you have, right? And as you're looking at the roster, the majority of you are at a university. Some, you know, may be at an institution, whether or not you're working full time now or it's an internship or things from that standpoint. But, you know, when you're going through schooling and you're kind of in, in the midst of things, you kind of get caught up in, in the moment and not really seeing as to what you have and take a step back further um i'm very familiar with where you're sitting um you know and probably about seven or eight years ago i got myself re-energized into the younger next generation for two reasons one i recognized from an insurance perspective and especially in claims that there's a there's a lacking of the next generation um, that's coming up through. So from an insurance industry standpoint, it's a gap for college students. It's a huge opportunity, right? So it was one of those things where I started to recognize as to, you know, needed to help and look for the next generation. The other part to it is personal, 
right? So I had a son who was entering college at the time. Um, he has since graduated from Seton Hall University. He started his career, um, but I have a daughter now who's a freshman at Sacred Heart University. So um, very much engaged in what both of them needed to do and has to do as they go through this process. So a lot of things that you're going through, uh, I'm living it because I'm kind of using it here at, at my stuff. So what you need to do is you need to recognize what you have. So recognize what opportunities your university has, your groups, your clubs, you, where's the location, where you're at, right? Or if you're, you know, I see some people in, in Georgia and Tennessee and, and uh, Yukon people, um, uh, Temple and Philly, right? So uh, across the board, you're, you know, you're in large cities, right? So see what that has to offer. Um, um, if, if you want to stay where you're at, if, if, if you don't, then kind of where do you want to live? And then look at that geographic location as to what are my opportunities, what, you know, insurance companies are available from that standpoint. Uh, when you go back to your university is to understand your faculty um, and they're dedicated to you. I mean, in some situations you have un these students who just think that just they're just a faculty um, and you're just taking their class and moving through. They are, can be huge advocates for you, um, but they also have tons of contacts in the industry. Um, some of them came from the industry and that's kind of a, an area where I don't think students appreciate. I think there's probably 10% of the students really get it and they take advantage of it and they wind up doing really well with their career standpoint afterwards and they have relationships they built there. So really take a step back and look at, at your faculty, develop relationships. So depending as to where you are in your university's you know, standpoint, you're a freshman, sophomore, you know, start building those relationships. If you're a junior, senior, you know, start real quick, right. Um, you know, and kind of, Take advantage of that part. Um, your alumni network, huge, you know, and I have some inform not information, but some reasons about that. Um, most universities, um, you know, have alumni who are connected and, and want to help out. Um, so you tap into that. And then the part is your career center, right? So use those resources available to you from there. I mean, just like this organization going through those slides before in terms of all that's available to you, it's unbelievable. Um, wasn't around when when I was going through this process, um, but it's one of those things as to you need to you know tap into all those different things as you go through. Um, you know, some quite, we're going to get into that you know into this as we go through, but how to prepare. Um, the, and the first word is the key is networking, right? You're on here to network, so you know you're you're ahead of the game, but that is something that you're going to use your entire career. So it's not something that you're going to use solely for getting your first job, right? It's as you get your job, then it's your next job and then in your industry. And, you know, from my perspective, um, every one of the stops that I've had along my career was because of a networks, networking situation that occurred. You know, I got my first job out of school, networking through my university. Worked there, I moved to another company because I knew someone was there. They recruited me to go to the other company, right? So it, it's it, whatever industry you get into, they're relatively small, um, you know, and people you move around from that standpoint, you build relationships and, you know, partnerships and, you know, you'll, you know, you'll connect forever from that standpoint. Um, I always said that, you know, universities start creating these different classes, um, you know, out of the blue. Oh, we're going to have a class on this or that. I've never seen one that had one on networking. And quite frankly, they should be one. I mean, and I always thought about maybe I'll create my own course and, you know, be an adjunct professor somewhere to teach it. But it's such, um, you know, you have a communications class, you have different things, but putting it all together, um, it, it's one that you you need to have and, you know, you should really, you know, take advantage of it where, and then you're practicing, you know, the who, what, where, when, and how. Um, it, and those are things that you're going to continue to to work on, you know, as you go through your career, as you go through. So we're going to talk a little bit as we go through. Um, you know, I always say is, you know, the person, the picture on the left, you know, you know, they're at graduation and, you know, like I graduated now, now what do I do? Right. Um, you don't want to be that person. Right. Um, uh, because there's not going to be much available for you. Right. So um, as you go through as your career and your career as a student, but start thinking about what's your dream industry, what's your dream job, those who want to go to grad school or law school, what's your dream school? right? Uh, what's your target? You know, so always have that, that concept. It's not one of those things is to, I kind of go back to when you apply to college, right? So when you're in high school, it was a process that you went through. And that process really was, you know, 
you, maybe you started in your junior year. Some people, you know, do a little bit earlier from there, but you know, maybe a year process. Um, that's just to figure out where you want to go to, to school uh, for the next four or five years. Now you're talking about something you want to do for the next 40 years, or at least start, right? It doesn't mean you can't change what you want to do, but um, it's a big step. So it's something as you know, you start, you know, whether you start in your freshman year and, you know, and you can't start having that thought process or start thinking about, I think this is what I would like to do. But then you work through your alumni, you work through your faculty I talked about before, you talked about different networking and connections and figure out, is this really what I want to do, right? So you start exploring it from that standpoint, but you have to start the process way before that individual is at the graduation time, because it's, it's that, that part's too late. Um, you get, you'll find something, but it's not what you want to do. It's not something that'll help you pay the bills, but it's not going to be your target job or your dream industry or anything from that standpoint. So just keep that in mind. Um, some different strategies, you know, um, talked about before your, your network, um, you know, who's in your current network, who do you know, where where, do you have gaps? And then how do I, how do I, you know, fill those gaps? Um, you know, a warm introduction versus a cold, you know, versus, oh, by the way, here's my name. Try to get some connections to it, build up on it. You know, oh, I know this person. So you can kind of ease that transition from that standpoint. Reference before, uh, leverage your 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 contacts through alumni. Uh, networking is not a transaction, right? It's not just, you know, move on to the next one. It's about developing relationships that, that could last for, you know, your entire career. Meetings, career fairs, conferences in your field of interest. Go into it. Um, Make LinkedIn your new networking friend, right? Um, just like you have all the other social media apps, use LinkedIn, um, make connections. Um, and right, last one here, don't be afraid to make the first move. You know, it's displaying confidence, be assertive. Now, listen, you, you know, let's be real. You're going to reach out to somebody on LinkedIn that you know from, a, you, from an alumni network or that you met at a fair. Um, and some may not respond. It's just this the way it is, right? Um, but some will, and you're not going to know until you try it, right? So just don't think, oh, you know, I didn't get a connection and kind of like, oh, it, it happens now, right? I get requests from, from LinkedIn all the time, you know, and I'll look at who it is. Sometimes it's just salespeople trying to connect with me, and other times it's people that are in my industry or anything from my standpoint. So you got to sort through it a little bit, um, but most people, if they tell you, oh, connect with me on LinkedIn or, oh, you're from this university or from this standpoint, um, they're not going to say, give me a call, whatever, if they're not interested, right? They just won't tell you at all. They're like, oh, good, good for you. Good luck. Um, you know, but, you know, most will, most want people want to help out and most people will want to tell them about themselves, right? Some people just, they love bragging about themselves, things from that standpoint. So you can just ask about their career and they'll give you the information as to what they did or things from that standpoint. So uh, don't be afraid of it from that standpoint. Um, this one here is a life of employer, right? So, um, it, you know, there's a couple different piles there. You know, when it comes in from internships or jobs and things from that standpoint, um, we get flooded with resumes, right? and um, it's it's difficult to sift through them, right? It's a sheet of paper, um, so you have to figure out how do you differentiate yourself. Well, part of it is through if you start earlier internships, right? So you know a lot of you are still in the university, and, and you know, if that opportunity is there, it's a great way for you to for your side to learn about that industry and is it something you really want to do um and then from an employer perspective it's a great opportunity it's like a free audition not free but um it's an audition as to um you know what this person's skill sets are um and and could they bring you know do we want to bring them back um or you know do we want to hire them you know afterwards from a standpoint so um think about that part you know the other part is networking right um you know i'll go through a stack of resumes and you know you know, the ones that I have to look at first are the ones that get referred to me from somebody. It's, a, you know, or someone was an intern before, right? So the networking piece helps out. Otherwise, it's it's that big stack of paper that you see there. And then, you know, a lot of you are very similar on paper. You all have great GPAs. You all are involved in clubs. You all have, you know, the similar academics. It's hard to sift through, you know, and say, oh, this one, you know, so you got to you got to find ways you know, to kind of stand out a little bit. And that's through the networking and, and making the connections. Um, so kind of get a little bit in terms of 
the interviewing piece. Um, so you know, you get that opportunity now. Um, right. So you did your internships, you made the connections, you, you got that stock of paper, you made it to the, the small side. Now you get the call uh, that you want to interview or you have multiple in interviews. And there's a lot, a lot of different areas on these things as to what to do. Um, I've kind of broken it down into five to kind of, you know, we have, you know, 45 minutes today. Right. So we can touch on these five and anybody who wants to talk afterwards, you know, I referenced before my emails there, we can set some calls up afterwards and talk a little bit more in, in more detail about it. But the kind of five things that we, I've thought about um, the other panel that I'm working on, the employer and an, an employee panel that we're looking at, we kind of came up with similar ones from that standpoint. And the other part too is I do at, at, at Arch here, I do the interviewing part for, our divisions claims interns and then those for what we have, we call it an early career program. So it's, you know, people coming out of, out of colleges and universities, it's kind of our training program. Um, so I interview those. So I spent a lot of time interviewing college students. Um, I have two on my own, right? So, you know, kind of familiar with the process from that standpoint, but these are the kind of the five things that we're going to go through a little bit. You know, one is research. One's your first impression, um, how to answer, questions, uh, your experience, and then asking questions. Um, so we'll, we're going to go through each of those slides individually in a second. But I want to talk about, you know, uh, looking at my notes from that other panel that I'm working on. So it was, there's two individuals, myself, another one, we're taking the roles. One of us is going to be the employer and the other one's going to be the employee. And we're going to talk about the interview process. But one of the things that we, we talked about was what did we think makes an ideal candidate? Right. So um, these, these were six bullet points. And ironically, most of them kind of fit into the five that um, you know I'm going to talk about here. But the first one was preparation, appearance, and professionalism. Um, the next one was insightful questions about the company and their direction. The connecting with and speak to company employees to gain insight prior to the interview. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Act as a business owner that wants the organization to be sex successful. Demonstrate thorough questions and answers. Uh, your responses that highlight why they want the job in this in this company, and then your willingness to learn and grow. Right. So those are some of the things that we thought you know, are are some good qualities of a good candidate um, that we would be looking for. And some of them are part of your process, but part of it, the answers and things from that standpoint. So. Um, you know, we'll kind of touch on them a little bit from that standpoint. But before I start moving on, any questions at all? Nothing? Okay. No, not yet. Oh, okay. All right. So let's just talk about research. Um, so the, you know, the first thing is, um, and, and this comes from experience. Listen, I've gone on interviews with people that, or, or career fairs, when you go to career fairs, um, you know, they have no knowledge as to, you know, they, they set it up, right? I got the interview, but they're like, you know, they're running from class or they're going, you know, here in and, and they're like, oh, let me just get, uh, and they're like, all right, they're not, they're not prepared, right? So before the interview, and I will say this too, you know, since a lot of you are at university and before you have a career fair, when you go to a career fair, be strategic on that one as well, okay? Um, I've had a lot of people at a career fair come up to a, our booth and you know you can tell they did they did research they knew i was there they knew i would I, I would go back to my university they knew i was an alum right so they did their research They're like oh you know you work at arch blah 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 you graduated from you know seton hall uh in this year um tell me about your experience or tell me and they they did their research right and they and but they were specific as that they wanted a career in, at insurance or at least they think they do um then I've had people come up and they look at they you know they look around and they're like oh um, Arch Insurance, can you tell me about your company? Oh, wait, I'm not here to tell you about my company. You you know so you know just don't stop by someone's table and say tell me about your company. Well, you should know why you're stopping. Don't waste their time and don't waste your own time, right? Because you know you want to be strategic, right? So do that research before the career fair, and the same thing is before your interview. Um, look at you know, the company, look at their website, 
um, figure out what is their mission. Um, what's their vision? What are they growing? You know, have some knowledge about that company. Um, because this is a fit, right? It's a fit for them, but it's also a fit for you, right? So you got to make sure that, you know, what the company advertises or what they talk about um, is what you want to do. You know, and quite frankly, at the end of the day, when you go through the recruiting process and before you graduate, right? So in months before you graduate, um, you should be making a tough decision between I have four job offers or I got five job offers. It's not like I got one. This is where I'm going. You got multiple. And and if you do the, do the process, you know, the right way and you, and you kind of practice all these different things you're going to learn, um, you will, right? You're going to have that opportunity to pick which place you want to work at. So that's why it's very important for you to understand about the company, about their people, the, where, where they're going. Um, is this where you want to be? That's the other part to it, right? Part of it is that they want to hire you, but again, you're, you're the asset and you want to look at it from that standpoint. So really look into that a little bit and, you know, be prepared to ask some questions about that. Um, look at some keywords in the job posting. Like, you know, if they start talking about you're going to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, and that's stuff that you have no interest in doing at all, or then does it really make sense for doing that, that role? So it's some things that you may need to vet a little bit, like, you know, talking with your professor, talking with the career department, getting some of that inquiries as to this is what it's saying. You know, do they have anything about it? You know, most, you if you're reaching these companies through the university, there's connections there. You know, the person at the, you know, career center can contact the the employer and say, you know, um, it says this, is this what it's, what it's really about, right? Or, or yourself can do it, right? So take advantage of those different aspects from that standpoint. Um, look at the connections at the company. This is where your alumni work comes into play, right? Who at your comp at your university has work or works at that company now? Can you, can you make a connection? Um, does the university you know, have, know that person? Is it a recent graduate? Can they get you in touch with that person ahead of time? Kind of talk a little bit about that part. Or you may have fan, you know, friends and family that work at that, that place as well. Um, and, you know, that goes a long way too. You know, you can get some insight um, as to the opportunity. Um, we did that with with my son, you know, with but as he went through his process, you know, one of the employers were like, we went up on, on LinkedIn, looked at that employer, like, wait, wait a second. Our neighbor two doors down works in, in that department and actually worked in literally in that department. It, it wasn't interviewing with those people. We had a sit down like, all right, listen, these two individuals who we're interviewing with, they both want them in a different department. Um, and we kind of vetted through. But as we went through that process and listening to him and what the things we realized that company wasn't a fit. Two different people in two different departments wanted our son to for a job there. But when we went through it, like the day, like multiple offers, we figure what is the best fit? And that one wasn't. And that was because we went, you know, just talking through the connections. So really look into that. Um, and then research who you're interviewing with. You know, you'll get a notice as to you, you're going to have an interview with, you know, uh, Sally Smith, uh, you know, or it's a panel with these three people. Look them up. You know, what's their background? Find them on LinkedIn. Do they, are they profiled on the employee's webpage? get a little bit of a connection. You, you know, it's something you have in your, in the back pocket that you may, you can talk about, um, or there may be a connection there, or you can, you know, when we go through asking questions, you may be able to say, Oh, Sally, I, you know, you've been with the company for five years based on your profile. You started here. You, you've kind of had multiple roles. Can you tell me about that? Cause some of this is about you flipping it, right? It's not about them asking the questions for the 45 minutes or an hour. Um, it should be both because you, I, I go again, you're interviewing them just as much as you're inter they're interviewing you. All right. So kind of think about, you know, some of those things from there. Any questions on research? Yeah, James has a question. He has okay. his hand raised. Go ahead, James. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Um, I just want to find out, like, in, researching on the people I'm interviewing with, you know, when you check them up on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is going to notify them that, hey, James viewed your profile, which might seem like you are stalking. Or, and is that professionally allowed to oh. be doing that? And uh, in that case, is there yeah. any way you can do research about 
Does so, anything you would. I, I mean, from a LinkedIn perspective, um, if you're, um, I mean, people can set their profiles up that people can't, you know, make them private or whatever. You can't see, you know, you can't, you can view their profiles or, or anything from that standpoint. Um, or they can pay extra that anybody looks at it, they can get a whole report. And that's usually salespeople and things from that standpoint. Um, me personally, um, if I see a student that looked me up, uh, you know, or message me ahead of time, that's a plus for me in my book because they're doing their research. Um, and quite frankly, I'm somewhat disappointed if they don't, right? Because they're, they're and, and usually you can tell because once they get on, they're like, um, uh, they're not sure what they're doing from that standpoint. So um, it's not like uh, your other social media things as to, you know, you know, you look at the person's profile or whatever from that standpoint, um, it's business, right? And like I said before, most people like talking about themselves, right? So the fact that you looked at their profile and you know, you're looking at you know what their career was, and then you follow up on that or ask a question about that, I think it's, I like it personally. I would rather uh, a candidate uh, that I can see that they're doing their research um, because I'm going to get into kind of skill sets and for a job and different things from SM and what that's part of that, you know, so doing research to me is a little bit of a, I can see the skill sets of a candidate. We're going to get into a little bit more as in another slide from that standpoint, but I, in generally speaking, I like it. I think that people should be doing it more. Otherwise just don't have a profile. If, if you don't want people looking at your profile, then don't have one. Um, so Anything else? Okay. Um, there is there is oh, one more question. All right, Prince, let's princess go. Princess has her hands up. Go ahead, Princess. Hello, Patrick. Um, thank you for the insightful presentation so far. I have a question about learning about the company. Mm -hmm. So in case you are going for a conference and then there are so many companies that will be attending and you are unable to research on all those companies, Will you advise that you just stick to probably about five or what's the best way to approach this? Yeah. yeah. So that's like part of what I referenced before, be, be strategic, right? So if you're like, if you're going to a career fair or if you're going to a conference, you can't, you can't see anybody. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, right? Before this call, I sent an email saying, who's attending this conference, right? I, I wanted to know how many people were going to be on and where you're from, right? I, doing my background work on you all, right? It's because I want to know who my audience was. So before you go to a conference or um, I know when you go to a career fair, you get the list of employers, right? But even at that, get a list as to who's going to be attending and then be strategic. Figure out, again, going back to what's my dream job, my dream industry. All right, so here's four or five companies that I would love to work. I think I would love to work for. And if they're at that conference, then that's your priority. You figure out who those people are and, you know, they all have name tags and you, you make your way around. Now, the other part is you really want to be assertive about it. You go on LinkedIn or you find their email and say, hey, I see that you're going to be at this conference. I'm interested in that industry. Or I'm interested in your company. Do you have five minutes for me? That's all. Five minutes, um, you know, which everybody does, right? They have breaks and, and receptions or whatever. And that's why they're at those conferences too, right? So you set that up ahead of time. Um and you either do it that way or you find that person there and, you know, and talk to them from that standpoint. So you do, I think that's why it's got to be strategic. You can't read anybody. And I'd rather go to a conference or go to a things and make five good connections than try to figure out, you know, passing through as to, oh, this one, I think I met this person. Um, it could be five good connections or you, you talk to five and you ruled out three. And that's just as good, right? So part of this process is figuring out what you like or what you don't like, um, because you don't, you're not you don't know what you want to do for the entire career, right? I've been doing this for quite a few years, and I'm like, hey, I like to do something different now, um, and that's that's part of it as well. So I I think that it's you'd be very strategic about it from that standpoint. Does, does that help answer the question? Yeah, it helps. Thank you so much. Okay, all right. Um, let's talk about impression. Um, First is attire. Um, we've gotten away 
from professional attire. Um, now, I'm not a you know stuffy suit person, but at the same time, um, you need to make an impression that you know, you're, you're professional, you respect the other individual. I've had people come on with, with a hoodie on an interview. Now, if you're at a career fair at university and you're coming from class and you stop by the table and you're in a hoodie, I get it at the same time. Lack, to me, it lacks preparation. You knew what your schedule was. You knew you were, so you put a shirt and tie on or a dress or whatever, you go to class and from class, then you go to the career fair. Um, and then, you know, so who cares if people on campus see that you're running around in a suit or a dress? It's not, you know, you're, you're, the important thing is making that impression. So the career fair, I, I kind of go back and forth on it from that standpoint, but um, it's kind of planning your day. This is what's important. That's going to happen. Again, it's a skill set that people, employers look for. So I think that part, you know, is there. But when you do have the interview, um, you guys insurance, right? So it's the financial services industry. Um, most of us are business casual, right? At the same time, um, we're not super casual. Um, you know, so having a shirt and tie uh, is a minimum, you know, shirt tie jacket, you know, you want to go to the shirt with a, with a blazer. I'm fine with that standpoint, you know, dress, but um, it's, 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 it's respect. And also from your, your own standpoint is to, you know, showing your, your best things from that standpoint. Um, so I think attire is important. Obviously, don't be late. Um, you know, everything is five minutes ahead of time. You know, so you know if it's if it's a face to face one, like you're going to the their um, their their headquarters or you're meeting at a place to have an interview, then um, you want to be at that physical place five ten minutes ahead of time. Now you want to be in that parking lot a half hour ahead of time because if you're driving, you never know what's going to happen from a traffic standpoint. My family, I drive them crazy because I always need to be early. They're like, well, it takes two hours to get there. Why are we leaving in two and a half hours? Because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, so don't be late. Plan it. If you have to travel, figure out how long it's going to take. Add on some time and then always add on. I want to be there 10 minutes ahead of time, um, at least, just so you get yourself situated. You need to go to the bathroom. You need to get a drink of water. You just don't want to be running in. I'm here and then go in. You want yourself to be set. You need to decompress as well. If you drove somewhere, you probably drove the hour or whatever it is thinking about the interview. You're nervous. That's understandable. You need time to decompress. You need to clear your mind. So you got to kind of think all that through as you go through. So that's that's the one part. Um, water bottles and food. Okay. Um, people are like, what are you talking about? Um, I've had people, you know, they're coming in, you know, they're have, they're finishing their yogurt. They're having a granola bar. Um, you know, the water bottle piece, I understand people need to have, you know, a drink as they're going through, but I've had people with the, you know, so I have, I have a cup, right? I'm thirsty. I'll take it. I have people, you guys walk around with those big, I don't know, whatever they're called, right? Containers. I right in the middle of, you know, in between. Yes. Right. That exactly, right? or bigger, right? In between answers, I'm like, there's a time and place, like, um, and and so just think about that, right? If if you need to have a set of you know, water, or in between, you know, you bring a water bottle, things from that standpoint, that's fine. But the the big jugs, don't bring food, you know, please. Um, again, people are like, really? I'm like listen, this is coming from experience. I'm like, I've literally had people like, hold on a second. I, I haven't had a chance to eat today. Okay. You know, <laughs> go at it. So um, think about that, the common confident piece. So that goes back to the timing, right? You need to decompress going for interviews is stressful. Um, and it always will be right. Unless, you know, you, you get to round two or three, you know, the people, but in the day, you're still going for something that you're not sure, you know, is going to happen or not. So there's always some nerves to it. So you want to have your own time. You want to be calm, figure out what makes you calm, right? Breathing technique, reading a book, just sitting, being quiet, listening to music, figure out whatever that is for the five, 10 minutes, just to, to, to calm me down a little bit. And then go in, go in and show them who you're at, be confident, stand up, 
they introduce you to every single person that you meet, you acknowledge them, thank them, you know, whether it's someone's holding the door for you or it's the assistant coming in and say, Oh, so-and-so is going to meet you. Right. It's, you know, you know, John's the assistant. Hi, my name's John. I'm going to bring you into Sally's office. Thank you, John. If try, I mean, it's difficult to remember people's names, but try to make that connections because it's all about, you know, people like afterwards and say, Oh, I like that person. I like that person. Right. So it's sometimes it's the little things, but it also get you in, into the more comfortable level as to, Oh, I mean, this person's nice or you get a vibe, right. They're just not nice. Right. And then you kind of look around and like, wait, is the entire company this way? Again, you got to read this group as, a, as it's well. Um, and then just material, you know, have your stuff ready um, as you go through it from that standpoint, you don't want, you know, all different, pages all over the place and things from that standpoint, be, be, you know, be prepared, make sure you have enough resumes. If you're handing out other um, material documents that you want to share, they should tell you ahead of time, you're going to meet with a panel and it's going to be a panel of four people. So then you want to have at least four resumes, right? You need to have others. You never know what's, you know, you pull it out of your portfolio or it rips, right? You need another one again, being prepared. So if you're meeting with four people, you probably better off have six to 10 in your, in your, in your portfolio. Always thinking about, you know, you know, they're like, ah, it's all right. No big deal. Um, so just have that preparedness, things from that standpoint. Um, interview questions. Um, we, we do have yeah. one question okay. from the slide before. So uh, okay. James, I don't know if you if you wanted to come off mute and, and ask your question. Okay. Um, so I, I didn't want to interrupt. So I wanted to find That's out. Um, about the other, uh, can one be overdressed for an interview, a career fair, you know, with three jacket suits and a tie with um, Spencer brochure and other pocket square and all that? No, I, I think being, being dressed, um, I mean, unless you're coming in in a tuxedo, um, you know, a suit, tie, jacket, whether it's a two piece or whatever, I think that's that's part of who you are. Um, so I don't think you can be overdressed from that standpoint. I think you just need to match your dress, right? So you come in professional, then you deliver professional. You don't want to come professional and say, hey, how you doing? Wait, that doesn't match up, right? Or you have a resume? I think I do. And then give them a, you know, a you know, crinkled piece of paper. It doesn't match up, right? Um, so, you know, you just need to match up from that standpoint. But so, but I don't think you can be overdressed. I, I again, I'm, I, 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 you know, I go the other way, right? The people that come up with the with the hoodies and things from that standpoint, I'm kind of like, really, you know, you, you couldn't have thought this out a little bit. Um, so, I think you're you're more than fine to be dressed that way, and you stand out. You know, as as on the person on the other side is to, I'm going to remember you, right? Or I'm going to, oh, that's the person that had, you know the matching tie with the, with the, you know, uh, the handkerchief or whatever. Just sometimes there's little things that kind of um, you use in your mind to kind of remember people from that standpoint. So, okay. So for interview questions, um, I'm just looking, I know I, I'm moving not fast enough for my slides. So from an interview question standpoint, obviously you're going to practice, right? We talked about before you're not walking into this thing cold. So before you're going to, you know, you're going to practice, you know, you know, ahead of time. Um, relate your college learned skills to work situations. Um, so th this is where, and using this, the star method. So it's the situation at hand. What's the task that you had to do? What was the action that you did and what was the result, right? So those are the kind of things when you answer a question, use those things to, as part of the answer. But at the end of the day, right? So you're interviewing for a job in the insurance industry and I'll say you know, you're in interviewing from claims. You've never handled a claim before in your life, right? So I can't ask you or nor am I going to get a to sit, figure out whether or not you're going to be competent enough to handle claims, based on your experience in college because you've never done it before, right? So what are we doing? So part of it is using what skills you have with your situations that you did in college. So if you were on a project, 
And, you know, what were the, what's the situation that you did? Well, you know, as you use an example, right? So you, 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 you put on your resume that you're part of this group and you raised, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for, you know, this, you know, this charity and you were the project leader. Great. Looks great on paper. It has nothing to do with insurance, nothing to do with claims from that standpoint. But we, what we want to know is how did you do it? What, what was your lead? Like, we want to listen to your leadership skills. What tasks did you do? Um, what's, you know, what critical thinking. Did you have a strategy in mind? Right. Um, so when you do it, so from that standpoint, I really don't care that you, you raise a hundred thousand dollars or a thousand dollars. Um, I, for the most part, don't really care about the charity unless it's something that I related to like, Oh, I, I'm, I do that stuff as too. But what I'm looking for is hearing as to your skill sets. And part of it is, can those skill sets relate to the job that you're going for? Or does that person have leadership skills? Um, I really, you know, I really like that, you know, because um, for the most part, any career you can go to, we can teach you the job functionality. You need to do X, Y, and Z. And then you have to learn it and things from that standpoint. The other part is, do you have the skill sets to do it? Do, are you a learner? Or do you have the leadership skills that we see down the road? Because sometimes we're interviewing you for now, but also like, this person's got, you know, got potential, right? So sometimes you you fill the job that you need to fill, but then sometimes you fill the job and saying, yeah, but this person could do X, Y, and Z down the road. So that's the other part that you need to, to kind of think about through is, um, you know, try to relate your skills to, you know, uh, what, what got done and things from that standpoint. So really focus in on your strategy, how you led the group, how you met the group, how you made sure people were on track for, you know, the different things from that standpoint, use those real specific examples, um, you know, to, to kind of go through it from that standpoint. And the last piece is, you know, clarity, you know, be concise uh, and be focused. Uh, and that part goes to you when you practice, right? So ahead of time, you're going to, you're going to have two or three different examples of, if they ask me a question about, tell me about a project you learned, or if it's on your resume, right? If your resume says that you led a project group to do X, Y, and Z, then be prepared for a question about that, right? So be prepared that they're going to say, tell me about that. Well, have your answer ready that, oh, I did this and we did this. And, you know, I met with the group and then we had focused discussions and things from that standpoint. So, you know, what's on paper is going to, it's, it's like giving the answers to the test, right? If you put it on your resume, pretty confident someone's going to ask that question um, or something about it. So be prepared to have some answers from that standpoint. Um, experience, um, you know, kind of what I just went through before. As a college student, a recent graduate, what experience do you really have? It's not much. So it's it's a not from the job standpoint. So focus on your skill sets. Um, talk about your life experiences, right? So clubs, sports, community, whatever it is, um, you're going to have a few on your resume. And then some say, well, tell me about something else. You know, tell me about this. Or you may, you know, put on your your things of interest. You like to do something else. That person may have the same interest. They, they may hone in on that. So you have something to experience. Anything you put on your resume, be prepared to give some sort of example about it. Just don't throw it on there to fill up space because if someone calls you out on it and you don't have something, you're like, oh, uh, <laughs> you, you don't know. And they'll usually call, ask them because they have a connection to it because they want to talk about it. Oh, you're into basketball. Oh, did you go, you know, here, that type of thing. I mean, I, when I looked at the list, right? I see a lot of, you know, quite a few people from University of Connecticut. I don't know if anybody's on here from Connecticut or not, um, but I went to Seton Hall. We're both in Big East schools basketball uh you know so it's like th there's the different connections as you start to go through from that standpoint so um yeah and patrick you do have two questions okay um so first up we have pearl who has a question and then elizabeth right after so go okay. ahead pearl all right uh thank you for this uh presentation i had a question on interview questions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, there could be like a thousand and one questions to prepare for. So how do you find the most like salient type of questions so that you can prepare ahead of time and not come up short on answers on your interview? Well, for the most part, right, what's on your, like I mentioned before, if you put it on your resume, 
be prepared for a question on that, right? So if you put your experiences, oh, I worked as a peer advisor, they're going to ask you something about that. Um, you know, as you go through it, um, you know, the different questions, um, you know, it's more about your experiences. They're going to ask you, you know, what experience did you have doing as a peer advisor? What experience did you have as, you know, they're not going to come up as to, oh, out of left field, not knowing what you do at all and ask you a question about it, right? So really what you put on your resume is going to be honed in. They may give you scenarios as to, um, you know, if you were, if you had this situation, you know, you had two coworkers, um, you know, who didn't get along and you got in the middle of it. Well, that's just a matter of your beliefs and how you're going to answer that question. You can't prepare for that one. I mean, you, in terms of you don't have any experience on it, or you may have said, oh, you know, it's interesting. I worked at a project at school or I was in a class project with five people, three of the people didn't get along and I had to do X, Y, and Z, you know, so you just kind of relate to it from that standpoint. But for the most part is, um, you know, what the things that you put on your resume is where they're going to hone in on it. Right. I, again, you know, that stack of resumes, there's, you know, 20 different candidates. They're, you know, sadly enough, they're not going to hone in on like, try to find different unique questions from that standpoint. So it's really going to be about what you have on it. Um, and you know, sometimes, you know, it's, you got 45 minutes. It goes, it goes fast as we know right now, it, it goes fast. <laughs> so uh, was it Elizabeth, someone? Yeah, yeah Elizabeth, yes. go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity, please. I want to know Relating college learn skills to work situations, I want to know if one can sound technical when, you know, explaining something in relation to that, if you are talking about it, can you sound a little bit technical? No, I think, I mean, listen, getting it, I mean, look, I've had people start talking about, you know, IT, you know, financial models as part of their project it has nothing to do with insurance claims. Um, but um, listening in depth to their knowledge was you know, indicating to me that, you know, um, there's a level of detail that the person knows um, and, and can articulate to do the different things. And, you know, some of it's like, wow, I, I, you know, I don't have any knowledge of that part or, or, you know, or we ask, you know, sometimes we, we go off tangent and we'll like, that's really interesting from our standpoint and start asking questions like, what does that mean? We start, and then you get to explain what it is. So I think you can, you can get to that level of technical, um, but again, keep it concise and, you know, hit the, you don't want to go ramble on too long. You can get technical, shows your level of detail, um, but you don't want to take up too much time. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, so at the end, you know, you're going to have usually five, 10 minutes to ask questions, um, but don't wait till the end, right? As you go through the process and, and different things, um, ask that question, make the interview interactive. Um, you just don't want it to be, they ask you a question, you answer it back and forth, right? Make it a conversation. Um, you you kind of want to make it more comfortable or on both sides, you, it'll help yourself or just answering the questions. Um, you know, so, you know, as you go through, um, you can get a lot of your questions answered throughout the process, but always have questions available at the end, regardless as to what you've talked about. I've had people like, you interview, so you have any questions? No, I'm good. Really? Like you're good. Um, um, and then we're like, okay. Um, and then we've had people that, ask questions through they're like yeah you know i think you've answered my questions throughout yeah we did but i'm sure something else you could ask or there's something else that we didn't that you you know part of it is like you think it went really well i just want to get off to the next one or i need to get to you know whatever so always have you know a couple of questions you, you know if, you, if you're interactive throughout the entire session save two for the end just as just as you know to you, you can have some more a little bit more dialogue back and forth um as I said before, flip the interview, ask them about specific experiences, learning opportunities, um, maybe examples of prior interns or first time employees who've, who succeeded and who have done things, right? You get an idea as to, is this going to be just my first job or 
do I have some development opportunities from that standpoint? Get an idea as to what they think that, you know, the job's going to be for the next, you know, what do you, what do you want to see out of me the next, in the first 90 days, six months to a year? Like, what's the expectations? Um, you know, you can ask about company growth, you know, do you plan on expanding, you know, um, you know, what are opportunities or the department expanding and, and, you know, stuff like that. The last one is the company culture. Um, and that's a key part um, to it is because you want to learn about what's the environment that you're working into. Um, you know, um, if, if, if it's a super um, high pressure environment um, and people think, oh, it's great. You know, I want to go work at this firm. You know, it's a big financial firm, but it's tough, right? And if that's not you, then that's not that's not the place, right? You gotta you gotta you gotta figure out what. Um, the whole thing is, you want to do what you like to do, and find the company that fits it, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than doing something that you don't like, um, or you, something you like, but the environment is not what you want because th then you're not happy you work a lot and you're going to work for 40 something years. So find the fit of uh, company culture. And I've been in a variety of, I, I've had companies that it's, you know, it's not great. And people are always looking to get out the door. And then, you know, the organization that we're at now, it's, it's the best one I've ever worked at. Right. So people like, you know, you know, I'm not really sure if I like doing this job, but I love the company and the company will help me get to a different department. Um, so that's the big thing is to finding about the, the company culture from that standpoint. And from that, your questions we asked of you, we have a few minutes left. Um, but again, I, I know my information was in the, in the, the group chat. Um, so, you know, feel free to connect with me afterwards, or we can you know, email me. We can, we can talk more, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, afterwards, but any other questions? Yeah. Yvonne, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you, Patrick, for this um, mm -hmm. presentation today. Um, your insight has been really helpful, um, especially preparing for for interviews in the future. Um, so my question to you is, how do you feel about candidates that bring notes or writing materials to the interviews? Uh, for instance, you brought up um, having your questions ready for them um, when the interview um concludes mm -hmm. um but sometimes throughout the the interview you want to take notes of what they're saying or um just so you can get your thoughts um, um listen um i think it's a, a, i don't have a problem with it and i actually think it's a good idea um at the end of the day um you need to reflect back um as to something what something they said or you want to follow up um um or um just a matter of evaluating it, right? So, you know, you go through it, you, you know, you could have a day, you can have, you know, one interview or two interviews, right? Or you go to a week, of, you, you know, it's the, the, the week of interviews that are on campus and things from that standpoint, it gets to be a blur, right? So then part of it is to go back to your notes. Um, you, you, you just want to make sure you're able to take your notes in a, in a, in a concise manner. You, you don't want to say, oh, hold on one second, let me get that, write that down. Um, so it, there's, a, there's a fine line to it, um, but I would encourage it because, if you don't and like you go back and then you're, you know, you sit down with, you know, whoever you're going to talk to is to evaluate your opportunities, whether it's friends, family, people at your university. I'm like, well, I think they said this and I think nah, that's not going to work. You know, you really need to, you know, you know, have those notes to go through, you know, and or have something to follow back with, with that individual, like, you know, follow up interview questions, you know, oh, you know, feel free to inter email people afterwards and say, you know, I had a follow-up question um, if you wouldn't mind, um, you know, looking at my notes, this is what I came up with. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, that's not a problem at all. Great question. And we do have one more question from Abigail, if that's okay, Patrick. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, Abigail. Hi, um, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I did want to ask, what should we avoid when getting asked what's our like strongest strongest asset or like weakness? Because I know that's usually a very popular question. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. I, I think it's to you know don't lie, right? At the end of the day, you know 
um, if you have a strong skill set, then tell them. I think I'm really good at this, and and have examples. Here's here's why. This is these are the ways I've done it. And areas that you know, um, a weakness. Listen, everybody does. I mean, w- last week I had an offsite meeting with my group. You know, part of my session was I had learning and development come in, and they did a session. And our session was on career pathing and skill development. Right? You always work on skills, right? So you know, if part of your you know development is you want to you know learn how to use, you know, Excel more. I want to learn more about this financial markets or whatever it is. You said, you know, here's, I'm interested in this. I've learned a little bit more. I'm intrigued about learning more. You know, you turn that, everybody's got needs development. So that's not, you know, a trap, you know, you don't go for, a, you know, a, a finance role and say, I want to learn more about finance, right? You know, be specific, right? So, uh, but it's all about you. You're going to be developing for your entire career. So um, just don't lie. Don't say I'm great at this. And that's a key part of that job. And you have no skill sets because after the first 90 days, it's not going to work. Right. So it's, it, it's got to be honest with people. Thank you. I think that helped a lot. Sure. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, we are at time. So if everyone could join me in a virtual round of applause for Patrick. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much for being here here today today and and spending your time with us. Um, So for all the students that are here with us here today, our next session is going to be on Thursday, November 14th. Um, So as mentioned, during the fall semester and spring semester, we host these sessions once a month. So it's going to be November 14th. Our presenting company is going to be AXA Excel. And we're going to have an awesome cyber insurance 101 course where we will learn everything about cyber insurance. So check out our website, register for the session through Zoom. Uh, Patrick, again, thank you for hanging out with us for an hour. This was absolutely amazing. No problem. Good luck. Thank you. And everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you next month. Okay. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.